So in corporate America, I just noticed that we all looked like we were in school together, like we were in a uniform. And everyone seemed to wear either the power colors, the yellow ties, the red ties, or just the blue tie. And I just wanted to separate myself from everybody else. And I always liked to be different. And one day I just decided to go to a state meeting completely dressed differently from everyone else and wore a bow tie. And that bow tie received a ton of compliments all day long. And from that point on, I just started wearing bow ties every day. And even when I started my business, I said, you know what? When I start making these bow ties and I start offering things and get me a store, the one thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm not in a position where I'm giving everybody the same thing. And what I mean by that is you walk into a department store and you see a yellow tie, but behind that yellow tie is 25 more of them. Next to that blue tie is 25 behind those. It's like, if I'm gonna go shopping, I don't wanna end up in the same thing with somebody else as soon as I leave here. They're gonna have on the same thing. Eventually I'm gonna bump into them. Detroit's not that big. So I always said, you know what, if I make something, I'm gonna be very exclusive. You may see the same bow tie over there, but I bet it's a different shape. You won't find two of the same unless I'm doing it for a wedding party, his and hers, a father and son. Those would be the reasons I would make something as a duplicate as opposed to being creative with the fashion or the bow ties. One point in time, Detroit was known as one of the fashion meccas, is the way I look at things. We have everything from pictures of our relatives, like grandfathers, uncles, and so forth, who really dress to the nines on a regular basis. And if you look back as far as even baseball games, guys left the house in fedoras and a full suit. So therefore, our city has always been known and it represented very well for fashion. And when it came to guys dressing up, we really were at the cream of the crop at one point in time. And I think that Detroit has also taught me my swag of, you know, to be comfortable in my own skin because you go certain places and people will know the way you dress, like, oh man, you, you got that Detroit look. I'm okay with that. I, I can take that compliment because I can take my Detroit look and I can go anywhere. So whether it be going to a nine to five, whether it be leaving there, taking my wife to dinner, or whether it be just going night on the town, I feel like my dress is, is fly enough to be able to go anywhere and, and withstand, you know, being complimented as opposed to looked down upon or maybe like you shouldn't have wore that. I'm always comfortable. I don't consider you to be overdressed for any event. I do want us to get back into that, that era of the, the gentleman where he wore suits and wore fedoras and cared about his appearance. I think that in our world right now, people unfortunately judge you within the first couple of seconds that they meet you based off of your appearance. However, sometimes wearing a suit and tie does make a difference on how you're dressed, how you're treated. And I just think that when we dress better, we actually feel better and we act better too as well. So a lot of nonsense wouldn't happen because who wants to mess up a nice pair of threads? So I would like to see us come back. But in order for that to happen, we do need more clothing stylists, uh, we need more stores available for people to shop in, and not just given what the world wants to see on social media or who's wearing what, and then, because that's more like a trend, you know, and those trends eventually die, whereas fashion itself is here to stay, because if you even look at it now, everybody who's wearing something who considers to be fashionable, they're pulling pieces from the older days. They're not just coming up with new stuff, they're not creating, it's like they're recreating what was already out there. I pray for a legacy that I'm building for my family to be able to say this is what Miguel started for us and this can carry over because I feel like a suit and tie, that option is never going to die. I mean, so whether it be wedding, funeral, job interview, corporate America goes back to suit and tie every day, that's just something that has to be done and it's a need whether it be in the schools, your uniforms that you have to wear. So where do you go to get those things from? Where do you go to get properly dressed? So it's something that I want to start and be able to leave behind and say, this is what I started. You work hard to, to have a name. And I just want that name to carry on. I don't want it to stop with just me. I want it to keep moving.